lime. Brought to you by Kellogg's, the folks who bring the best to you each morning, the widest choice of cereals in the forms you like best. Yours from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning panel of What's My Line? First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you, and now I want to introduce to you the man that bought me this hat. <laughs> Active producer, Martin Gable. Very pretty, too, Arlene. I love it. On my left, a girl who's becoming a habitué of Westminster Abbey, preparing her wardrobe for Princess Margaret's wedding, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And we are very proud to have on my left our panelist who this week made publishing history, Mr. Bennett Sir. When I was down at the University of Arkansas last week, a lady named Bessie Moore, who's the head librarian down there, said, you know what we call John Charles Daly down here? A living doll. <laughs> so here's that living doll in person, John Charles Daly. <laughs> And the season's greetings to all. Thank you very much, Bennett. It was very nice. And my thanks also to our good librarian in Arkansas. Nice to have you all here. And nice to have Martin Gable back on our panel. And we're uh, all sorry about Arlene. Somebody <laughs> dropped a flower pot out. You know how. <laughs> but um, everything's going to be all right. We got the flower pot off, and the plants will get off later. And that's just a sample of what we intend to do with the panel tonight. And we'll also have a famous mystery guest a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger after this word. And now let's meet our first challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Sign in right there. Alex? Alex Pompez. Is that right, sir? Where are you from, Mr. Pumpet? Uh, Woodside, Long Island. Woodside, Long Island. Right. That's where you're living, President. Right. Oh, that's fine. Well, may I present our panel formally? Panel, Mr. Pumpet, will you join me over here, please, sir? Uh, do you know how we keep score in What's My Line? I do. All right, if you know how we keep score, there's a very simple job to be done. That's to let the fine audience that we have in the theater tonight and the folks at home know exactly what your line is. And now there's a small departure to announce. As you know, in the past week, we filed, uh, fired a Polaris missile from under the water, and we sent Discover 11th up. So after more than 10 years, we've sort of taken a look at ourselves, and we've decided to make a change. Instead of just telling the panel that our guest is salaried or self-employed, to save time and move things a little more rapidly, we're also going to say whether they deal in a product or in a service. And you will inaugurate this new... Uh, <coughs> system that we have, Mr. Pompez. Your children, your grandchildren will undoubtedly okay. note this in the record of history, okay. but Thank you. I want you to bear up under this. Now, don't let it throw you. So, panel, we will tell you that Mr. Pompez is salaried and he deals in services. And let's begin everything with um, Bennett Sir. Mr. Pompez, uh, your name is a Spanish name. Uh, do, you, do you come from Latin America, South America, yes. somewhere in there? Uh, is the service that you perform done for a non-profit making organization? Yes. Uh, small yes. No. conference. <laughs> small conference. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Well, it is. Yes. Done for a non-profit making organization? No, no. 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 <laughs> no. 
I might, I'd get in a lot of trouble with some friends of mine if I let that answer stand. That's one down a night to go, Miss Francis. It's a profit-making organization. A profit-making mm -hmm. organization. Um, do you have anything to do uh, in the handling of monies? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Gable. Uh, is your service one that this panel could use? No. Mm, three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, does your service have anything to do with a large organization? Or is it something that a large organization rather than an individual would employ? No. Uh, well, now wait a minute. <laughs> I must say, I think the terms of reference here are strange to Mr. Pompez. Yes. Yes. Uh, do your services benefit people? Yes. Human beings? Yes. Well, Men now, I and... would say, here, let, me, let me digress from a moment here. The, the, the benefit is there, actually, in the ultimate result of the service that's rendered in uh, the simple fact that people could enjoy, appreciate, seek out, want, uh, wish, and uh, take some effort to get this service. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, Mr. Pompez, uh, is there anything creative in your work? Is there anything creative in your work? Would, uh, you mean in a very general sense or in the specific sense of the arts? Uh, no, in a very general one which might get me a yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that covers enough ground to get you a yes. All right. uh, may I assume that you are not directly connected with any of the lively arts? Yes. Uh, do you uh, create something uh, which does not necessarily result in a product, but is part of the plan behind a product? Sound like John Daly now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm confused too, Martin. I wish I oh, no, not you. No, I, I think we'll have to give a no to that, Mr. Pompaz, no. because right. the product was raised. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Pompaz, does your work, the service you perform, ever take you within the range of the United Nations building over on East 42nd Street? Yes. It does. <laughs> John, keep your hands off that card. Uh, 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 wait a minute, Bennett. <laughs> Let me say this, that it would be uh, necessary, I think, for a very substantial element of the New York community and the normal pursuit of their affairs to be called into the environs of the United Nations building while this would not necessarily have a, or be considered a focal point of their activity. <laughs> uh, I know... I'd like to walk down First Avenue, Bennett. That's <laughs> I unfortunately know a lot of New Yorkers who've lived here all their lives who have never been in the United Nations building. Uh, well, it's so more worse than that. Some of them have never... Uh, I'm editorializing. <laughs> you uh, are Mr. That. Pompez, do you have anything to do with languages? No. That's five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Do you have anything to do with uh, living quarters, hotels, and so forth? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Gable. Is your service more useful to, say, men than women? No. We just were overruled. We were just overruled. I think we would have to agree, Martin, that the service would be of more interest and very probably of greater use to one sex rather than the other. Yeah. Do people come to you for their service? No. That's seven <laughs> down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Then you go somewhere to perform your service. Yes. Uh, do people watch you perform your service? Sometimes. Uh, do they pay to watch you perform your service? No. Eight Ooh, down and two to go, Mr. Seth. Do you have anything whatever to do with any kind of sport? Yes. Uh, is it a sport that is played outdoors? Yes. Is it a sport that is played often in the United States? Yes. Is it a seasonal sport? Yes. Is it played about this time of the year? Yes. Is it a sport that requires a team rather than an individual? Yes. Is it baseball? Yes. Very good, Bennett. That's wonderful. Yeah, what do I do now? Uh, so who doesn't know baseball? Uh, Pompez. <laughs> let's see. The Yanks haven't got any new players at all this year. <laughs> 
<laughs> Mr. Pompey. <laughs> Mr. Pompey, this is one of them. May I? Uh, uh, are you on rather on the managerial side than the playing side of baseball? No. Well, now, I think with your permission, Mr. Pompey, we would have to agree that if the definition is between the player and the managerial side, and the managerial side encompassing all but playing, then we would have to give you a yes. Well, are you either a scout or a coach? Yes. Well, Mark... <laughs> Mark Martin is just whispering in a loud stage whisper that you're a scout, so I'll ask, are you a scout? Right. Yes. Baseball yes, scout. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Actually, uh, Mr. Pombez is a, a scout for the San Francisco Giants. Uh, Mr. Horace Stoneham's baseball team, which was in Candlestick Park for as glorious of opening, I guess, as anybody has ever seen. Candlestick Park in, in San Francisco. Do you think they're going to win, Mr. Lopez? Well, we got a chance. Well, Tutt Shaw says the Giants are going to win the pennant this Nevertheless. year. Nevertheless. <laughs> Nevertheless. They won in 14 innings today, John. Yes, they, well, sometimes. Glad, glad to hear that. Well, now, scouts <laughs> now are fascinating. Know. And if this isn't a rude question, and I hope it doesn't embarrass you, um, have you discovered any stars? Oh, yes. I discovered uh, a few of them. Uh, Monty Oyland, Hank Thompson, Willie McCovey, uh, Sir Peter, and a number more boys. And I have a lot of new boys coming up, and I think tomorrow they'll be coming stars. Well, that's a pretty good record. You wouldn't like to come out and watch me play baseball tomorrow afternoon, do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on a wonderful record. Sir. Nice to have you on Watch My Life. Well, I must give the, the panel some special kudos. That was a tough one, and I thought you weren't going to get it, but you did open it up. Let's see what you can do with the second one. Will you come in and sign in, please? Emma? Emma Stokovich, is that right? <laughs> Is it uh, Miss or Mrs. Stuckowicz? Mrs. Mrs. Stuckowicz, where yes. are you from? Milwaukee. Milwaukee? Oh, yes. well, how nice to have somebody from Wisconsin. May I present the panel, Mrs. Stuckowicz? Yes, ma'am. Will you join me over here? Do you know how we keep score? Yes. Fine, then we'll let the folks at home and those who are here with us in the theater know exactly what your line is. in line with the new policy, and needless to say, you realize the ramifications of any flat declaration about product or service uh, are yours to determine. We will tell you that Mrs. Stockowicz is both salaried and deals in a product. And with that, let's begin with Martin Gable. Mrs. Stockowicz, uh, is your product more apt to be liquid than solid? Don't look at me. <laughs> now, I would say this, Martin, um, to be completely fair to you, uh, withdraw the question. No, that was too bad. <laughs> uh, I think that um, uh, it's a difficult question to answer. Uh, I'm always guided by you, John. I yeah. withdraw it. Well. And shall I proceed? Well, I tell you, there, there is a, a, an estate in which we might well consider the product uh, to have uh, one description, while in another estate we would consider it to have uh, a different description. Now, in other words, it's not beer. It's not beer. And, uh, we've established that. Do you do your work in Milwaukee? May I go on, John? Excuse yeah, me. please. Do you do your work in Milwaukee, Mr. Yes. Stackland? Uh, is it a, a product which, uh, which is peculiar to Milwaukee? I mean, and Milwaukee is known for it beside beer? No. <laughs> One out of nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Mrs. Stockowicz, would this product be found in the home ever? Yes. Uh, would it usually be found in the home? I mean, would it be not unusual to have it in the house? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, does it usually have a definite temperature? No. 
Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Takowicz, is this a product either consumable or wearable? Both. Both? They're wearing them. Could be both. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Stackowicz withdraws that answer, <laughs> and we will just say it is one or the other. You're very gracious, Mr. Is it consumable? Yes. Is it wearable? No. <laughs> we Three dollars <laughs> seven to go. <laughs> she said it was both. No. <laughs> Listen, I want to tell you something. If it can melt, I'm glad it isn't wearable. <laughs> Is this a product, since there was some confusion about it being liquid or solid, is it a product that sometimes is solid and then melts into a liquid? No. Four no. down to six to go, Mr. What Gable. What confusion, Is it a product that sometimes is liquid and then solidifies into a solid? Yes. Ice. 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 <laughs> if you, that works both ways. But the way she does it, you see, it starts with... Well... Uh, is it something that... One would have in the kitchen? Yes. Uh, is it something that helps to preserve food? Helps to preserve food? Yes. Ah, that's a very interesting thought, isn't it? Do you want to give him the no, or do you want me to do it? I will. You. No. <laughs> <laughs> five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is this product ever eaten or drunk? Yes. <laughs> oh. Don't Bye. give any more than a yes or no. <laughs> is it... <laughs> Uh, is it eaten and drunk by human beings rather than animals? I would think in, in the main, yes. Yes. But animals could eat it and, or drink it and no harm would come to them. Yes. Uh, may I assume that we are not dealing with an alcoholic beverage of any kind? We're not. Okay. Uh, would you keep this in the refrigerator? Yes. Is it, when it is served to whoever's going to eat it, is it partly liquid and partly solid? Pardon, I didn't, I didn't hear you. When it's served to an individual, is it partly liquid or, and partly solid? Do you want to leave now with me or do you, do you want to come later? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it is a, a product, the estate of which is so various that you could get almost any combination and we could give you a qualified yes. And it wouldn't help me a bit, is that it? That's right. Uh, would this be eaten at the main meal? Sometimes. They would? <laughs> In an eccentric household? <laughs> uh, oh, this is, this is very difficult. It could be, but Daria, I think it's much better to give you the no and say no, it would not be eaten after the main meal. Six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Stockwich, has this product or any part of it ever been alive? No. I quit. I quit. Just goes to show you get all carried away with Easter and you ask Mrs. Stockwich to come and visit with you and she breaks eggs, 10,000 of them a day for the standard produce company so uh, they can put them in cakes and things like that. And look at all the trouble we had. Oh, but we had a lot of fun too. Thank you, Mrs. Stockwich. We had a grand time. Nice of you to be with us. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which I ask my friends on the panel to blindfold themselves. Blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, yes John. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and uh, we'll begin it with uh, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, if there were a record shop open and I went into it, 
Uh, could I purchase an LP by you? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, are there more than one of you as mystery guests tonight? No. One? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Oh, then are you an actor? Mm. No. <laughs> What? No? I didn't think so. Was that a no? I would think basically it would be no. This is not to say that our guest does not on occasion act, but it would be uh, misapplied as the basic description of his activities. Mr. Gable. Are you a singer? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, are you a performer of any kind? Yes. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Sir? Uh, do you... Are you, to use a question that Dorothy asked of one of the contestants, are you connected in any way with the lively arts? Here. Yeah. Miss Francis? Are you a comedian? Mm-hmm. Mr. Gable? Are you now appearing in New York? No. Uh, five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you do your comedy uh, ever in nightclubs or supper clubs? Yeah. Mr. Sir? You do? Was that was an answer was yes? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, have you mm. ever appeared on the Ed Sullivan show? No. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. But do you appear on television? Mm-hmm. Good. Gable? Is that the principal medium that you're with? Yes. Miss Kilgallen? Uh, do you appear with regularity on a certain show? Tom or Harry regularity? Sam regularity. <laughs> Sam regularity. Yeah. Yes. Yes, there is, there is a, a degree of regularity in the appearance, Mr. Sir. Uh, when you appear on this show, is it always playing the same character? <laughs> no. That's seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. I detected something in the voice that time a little I bit. I did too, but he's got an LP, I'm sure um, of it. Have you, do you appear, <clears throat> do you appear as a guest often on someone else's show? Mm-hmm. Mr. Gable? I pass. Miss Kilgallen? Let's, let's, let's have Arlene pick it up. Are you I've passing, Mr. Sir? Yes, I am. Ms. Are you passing? To you. All right. Um, is it a uh, nightly television show? What? That he appears on. Every night? Who? Whoever that is. <laughs> when? Who's speaking? <laughs> is that, that John or the contestant? That, that, uh, that wasn't fair. Uh, you, you wonder if our guest appears on a nightly television show? Yes, sir. No. There's the voice again. It's Jonathan Winters. I'm sorry. <laughs> you used that little voice twice, didn't you? All right. You couldn't help yourself, could you? <laughs> and we had you running then, actually, because the question is, it was framed, got into a regular connotation, which... But, uh, I, I wish he'd say some Easter greeting like Grandma or Frickin'. Well, I hope everybody got their chocolate bunnies. <laughs> I just want Jonathan to tell me whether I'm nuts or not. I would have sworn he had a record out, an LP. Well, I, uh, I have an album out, but uh, not, not an LP. Oh. <laughs> That's telling it, Jonathan. <laughs> I mean, what uh, is it, an SP? Well, I look at the, uh, the I mean, the small, I mean, perhaps I was thinking of the small uh, record, the single. And, um, I don't we know. Have, we have well, the all LP. Right. The LP. You have the LP? Yeah. It's LP at our You're just house, being so. modest, Jonathan. Well, anyway, I, it'll be long playing, I'm it'll sure. It'll be long playing, I probably I'm ate sure. too many chocolate bunnies and got confused. <laughs> Thank you, Skipper, Thank for you. being our guest. Thank nice you. to have had you with us. We'll be back after this word from our alternate sponsor. 
And now, unhappily, it's time to say on this Easter night. Good night, Miss Eileen Francis. Is there anything more you'd like to say about my hat, John? <laughs> no, we'll get the flowers off, too. Don't worry about it. I didn't think it was nice of you to start the show by saying I was potted. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Mom. Good night, Alan. Good night, Dennis. Good night, you living doll, you. Oh, better. Thank you very much. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on Potted What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Todman. to you by Kellogg's, the folks who bring the best to you each morning, the widest choice of cereals in the forms you like best. Yours from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning panel of What's My Line? First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you, and now I want to introduce to you the man that bought me this hat. <laughs> Active producer, Martin Gable. Very pretty, too, Arlene. I love it. On my left, a girl who's becoming a habitué of Westminster Abbey, preparing her wardrobe for Princess Margaret's wedding, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And we are very... Uh, your name is a Spanish name. Uh, do, you, do you come from Latin America, South America, yes. somewhere in there? Uh, is the service that you perform done for a non-profit making organization? Yes. Uh, small yes. conference. <laughs> small conference. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, it is. Yes. Done for a non-profit making organization? No, no. 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 <laughs> I might, I'd get in a lot of trouble with some friends of mine if I let that answer stand. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. It's a profit-making organization. A profit-making organization. Um, do you have anything to do uh, in the handling of monies? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Gable. Uh, is your service one that this panel could use? No. Mm, three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, does your service have anything to do with a large organization? Or is it something that a large organization rather than an individual would employ? No. Uh, well, now wait a minute. <laughs> I must say, I think the terms of reference here are strange to Mr. Pompez. Yes. Yes. Uh, do your services benefit people? Yes. Human beings? Yes. Well, now, I would say, here, let, me, let me digress from a moment here. The, the, the benefit is there, actually, in the ultimate result of the service that's rendered in uh, the simple fact that people could enjoy, appreciate, seek out, want, uh, wish, and uh, take some effort to get this service. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, Mr. Pompez, uh, is there anything creative in your work? Is there anything creative in your work? Would, uh, you mean in a very general sense or in the specific sense of the arts? Uh, no, in a very general one which might get me a yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that covers enough ground to get you a yes. All right. uh, may I assume that you are not directly connected with any of the lively arts? Yes. Uh, do you... Uh, create something uh, which does not necessarily result in a product, but is part of the plan behind a product. Sound like John Daly now. 
<laughs> and I'm confused too, Martin. I want you to... Oh, no, not you. Jim. No, I, I think we'll have to give a no to that, Mr. Pompaz. No. Pompers, because right. the product was raised. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Pompaz, does your work, the service you perform, ever take you within the range of the United Nations building over on East 42nd Street? Yes. It does. John, keep your hands off that card. Very proud to have on my left our panelist who this week made publishing history, Mr. Bennett Sir. When I was down at the University of Arkansas last week, a lady named Bessie Moore, who's the head librarian down there, said, you know what we call John Charles Daly down here? A living doll. <laughs> so here's that living doll in person, John Charles Daly. <laughs> And the season's greetings to all. Thank you very much, Bennett. It was very nice. And my thanks also to our good librarian in Arkansas. Nice to have you all here. And nice to have Martin Gable back on our panel. And we're uh, all sorry about Arlene. Somebody <laughs> dropped a flower pot out, you know. How <laughs> but um, everything's going to be all right. We got the flower pot off, and the plants will get off later. And that's just a sample of what we intend to do with the panel tonight. And we'll also have a famous mystery guest a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger after this word. And now let's meet our first challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Sign in right there. Alex? Alex Pompez. Is that right, sir? Where are you from, Mr. Pompey? Uh, Woodside, Long Island. Woodside, Long Island. Right. That's where you're living, President. Right. Oh, that's fine. Well, may I present our panel formally? Panel, Mr. Pompey, will you join me over here, please, sir? Uh, do you know how we keep score and what's my name? I do. All right, if you know how we keep score, there's a very simple job to be done. That's to let the fine audience that we have in the theater tonight and the folks at home know exactly what your line is. Now there's a small departure to announce. As you know, in the past week, we filed, uh, fired a Polaris missile from under the water, and we sent Discover 11th up. So after more than 10 years, we've sort of taken a look at ourselves, and we've decided to make a change. Instead of just telling the panel that our guest is salaried or self-employed, to save time and move things a little more rapidly, we're also going to say whether they deal in a product or in a service. And you will inaugurate this new... Uh, <coughs> system that we have, Mr. Pompez. Your children, your grandchildren will undoubtedly note this in the record of history, but I want you to bear up under this. Now, don't let it throw you. So, panel, we will tell you that Mr. Pompez is salaried and he deals in services. And let's begin everything with um, Bennett Sir. Mr. Pompez, 